Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting and everything and amazing propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, the one and only Master Propaganda Hero Strike Defender of the Fatherland. Off here to a a one e one on female approach in the northwest stands the Siligath fighting for the British Empire, the Commonwealth here with the fifty foot infantry. Division. We got Australian Defence Battle Group right off the bat again. No big surprises. That is by far now the most popular battle group having oh taken Indian battle groups otherwise year long supremacy. In the southeast stands Zulu fighting for the Deutsches Afrikor, the German army. Here with the 90th Panzer Gunnishon and a rare display as well of the Battlefield Espionage Battle Group. So they should be interesting here. Higher ranking, top tier player like Zulu should perhaps give some ideas maybe how this Battle Group can be played. Said it doesn't see a lot of play because I think for a lot of people it just feels like a bunch of gimmicks loosely tied together. It doesn't quite like have any cookies of core. But maybe Zulu can show the way again as mentioned. As always, big hearty thanks to my Patreon supporters for the continued generous and absolutely wonderful support of the propaganda cast and a big hearty thanks for the commenting and liking on the videos helps out immensely with the youtube algorithm so as one australian start here with a dingo there for Siligath. we got the panzer punion towards the center we got panzer grenades hitting out north and east zulu there focusing on the northern end of the map here leaving the south perhaps a bit more to the british we can see the Siligath going for a more broader approach you might be wondering why isn't the Siligath committing too heavily to the australians here versus the deck well, it could be very well due to the light vehicle threat here, where again he will need anti tank rifles, even he does have the two pounder gun as an option. Some anti tank rifles would probably do a silly guard well, but it could also be that a silly guard just has an entirely different plan in mind. We'll have to see, and of course, we don't quite know what Sula is planning either. This is going on within his Byzantine strategic mind. Of near field points being ceased, Panzer Glenia, they're busy with their Karnak TK bolt action rifles. out here third panzer gun squad there for Zulu definitely a bit rare there out of the deck they typically tend not to be that heavy on panzer gun it is but Zulu clearly backing all the trends here and there goes Siligath with the sectional weight bit of skirmishing between the dingo and the panzer gun his fences slowly giving way here to bullet fire third panzer gun is called there for Zulu all the points being ceased panzer puniming up with the third panzer gun squad and so here Jorgen goes down Two British machine gun fire there from the Dingo. Nicely situated there with the Dingo itself. Bren gun. Nice and mostly comfy, of course. You can never be too comfortable when you're getting shot at. Section in for the north here. Panzer's looking to close in here. Perhaps bluffing that he's got grenades already. Perhaps not. But either way, it might appear that Ozzeligarth definitely is not going to take any chances there. And now we're moving in here as well. Sap is to focus down. Certainly a lot less bulletproof than a Dingo. They present a much easier target here for Zulu. And something can more quickly overwhelm and push back. And he, of course, does so. Plus, as they had a benefit, if he somehow, you know, Ozzeligarth screws up and doesn't retreat them in time. And he gets them wiped. There'd be no way for Ozzeligarth to repair his Dingo. Basic work up here, light support company of the Sulu. So triple panzer gun here. See it, center being occupied. Dingo's moving in, sections bring up. There will Lee Enfield rifles. Panzer Pioneer, panzer gun is under heavy pressure here from the Allied forces. Section out here for the Siligath. That's two sections one Australian section, the Sappers, and the Dingo. A bit more of a varied open there for an Australian battle group choice there. And we got here the 250 3 Funk Panzerwagen out here for Zulu. Ready to plant valuable communication to the men. There we go, nice though. Aim shot here on the Panzer goes pushing them back as they take out a fat chunk of health and of course makes them easy to hit for the rest of North here. Panzer goes finding out so close to the cutoff here, though in this case, it's not an essential cutoff point here for Zulu since, I mean, he's already got most of the part it would technically lead to, so seems a bit unusual there. In the south, 250 3 moving in here. We got the platoon command post here for Siligarth. And an ambulance for Zulu, which of course he does need for his men as several of them are in a rather perilously poor condition i mean just look at that squad less than half health and this one is pretty much less than half health as well we do get a goliath out for zulu a small remotely controlled bomb obviously fairly infamous though fun fact and what most people perhaps don't know is they're actually larger versions there's one actually based off the kettenkrat known as the springer and there's an even larger version known as the borgrat 4b 
even more fun fact about that ball got for Bewus a bit, they actually drive it initially apart before then remote controlling to the last bit of the way. And even more fun is towards the very end of the war, they'd actually convert some of those into tank destroyers, basically mounting anti panther strikes on them. Yeah, it's, it gets a bit funky. Humber the Neu for Zuligath, Bolt shows us the deck, and there goes Zulming 40, leading the men ahead here with the 250 3, of course, very inconspicuously there. Now go engaging first strike burner can tank rifles. Of course, you can see again anti tank rifles. Very sensible choice against the deck. You definitely don't want to be caught unprepared. But we do also have the two pounding gun. Humber Zolma's done. Goliath, they're rolling ahead here. Panzer gun is closing in here with the British. That's really those quickly launched here by the Dingo. 250 3 supporting here the German assault here. And we can see the 90th Panzer gun is successfully forcing off the Zulu from Asilgafen. No, not Zulu. There you go, the Humber to the rescue. And here, of course, we do note that Zulu's current force composition does have a bit of a gaping flaw in it, or missing element, which is he doesn't have any actual, like, you know, light vehicle counters. And at this point, he's basically going to have to, like, bet on anti tank grenades or for Siligath to drive in blindly and then get blown up by the Goliath. Which, I mean, could ostensibly happen, but it certainly is a bit of a. Uh, bet there. Bit of skirmishing up north here. As an additional fun fact to Warm and Dawn, Goliaths were typically, and Borg for Beast, were typically part of these known as Funk Line Abteilung, so, you know, radio control units, which could actually involve Tiger tanks actually like being used to control them, or Stugs. There's a bit of extra Goliath fun fact. Panzer is there pushed back by the Humber Armored Car. We do get the Panzer Agassi as. Zulu does lag any more immediate counters to the Humber. Of course, I've seen Vasilka force up more Humbers. We got the two pounder gun out, and there we go. Going straight for the Hump here. Anti tank robs the punch through the armor. Even the crew most distressed. To the driver. South side here, Goliath continues to lie in wait. Mines up here, catching Zulu off guard. And Zulu, in fact, has not laid down any mines yet, which is certainly a bit of a surprise. See, of course, he's clearly. Moved on from mines to Goliath, which causes just bigger self propelled mines. And there you go! Oh dear! The strains are easily able to outpace it, though it does feel like here that Sulagath so hasn't realized it's coming his way. Or not. And Kaboom loses one there. Hey, Bruce, is that your dog? My dog's back in Australia, you goon. Oh. Also, most dogs don't explode when shot at. Except for my neighbor's dog. Anyways, Humber Dingo moving in, then gating the Panzer Grenadiers. Machine gun on the way there for Siligaf to help contain the infantry. So, yeah, nice attempt there by Zulu, but uh, certainly a bit tricky there to get the Goliath close enough in to do the job. Two pounder gun being spotted here by Zulu's men advancing swiftly, and we got the Humber though joining in with its auto cannon, crashing machine gang some fun in. And we got Betty 2 there on the Dingo, medical support here for Siligaf. Zulu going for the cutoff point again this time, actually cutting off Zulu's northern munitions. Dingo taking it from the Panzergers and Zulu and the 90th Panzergrenadier. I'll bring in more Panzergers for more Panzerbüchse. Of course, if he goes for the plunder ability, in which case he could ostensibly, like, you know, salvage light vehicles from possibly, like, you know, bazookas. Quick mark target there from the Dingo. Was it the Humber? I think it was the Humber. Sections hum bumming forward, see 250 3 of course, trying to screen the German troops. Goliath, they're hiding by the well. That's the 250 half to to assist here around the center as Sulu's situation is being slowly made complicated. Ambulance being fixed up. They're two pounder gun anti tank rifles going there. Could cost Sulu his ambulance. British anti tank rifle force, though, of course, simply can't hit it. 250 3, though, almost gets knocked out. Goliath withdrawing as well here. Hiding out in the nearby tree line. Fighting for the center remains quite intense. Goliath sneaking up. They pick up the Vickers at the ready. Panzer's being forged. Low on health, though. Very low on health. I think it's better for Zulu to withdraw them. And there we go. Zulu ends up agreeing with me. Back at base for Zulu. We're not seeing much in terms of tech. We got here the whole line up for Zuligar. Dingo almost there. Getting knocked out, but he does escape here. Panzer's being blasted. Australians joining in. Got the scope, Lee Enfield rifles up there. Troop controls and healing. Humber raising in. Panzer's under fire. 
Gonna fix up that 250 3 Punch is engaging the Humber. Good shots. Two pounder gun fine. Good shot on the ambulance. Punch is moving in. Ooh. Close call there, Pantex Rapper. The Vickers Goliath sneaking forwards here. Zula, though, definitely chose the wrong time to sneak it forwards. Not entirely sure what possessed Zula to decide that was the correct time to move it in. Well, I'm sure Silagath is most appreciative that Silla decided to reveal his Goliath in such a uh, unideal manner. And the 250 HC goes down here. Another roaring kill there for the British Empire. Meanwhile, he's moving up for the company command post, and Zulu's got the mechanized company in there. So he's not looking at tanks anytime soon here versus Silagath and the British forces. Dingo dashing in here. Pantakers, though, of course, remain a bit of a problem. Could have popped a snare here, but Zulu misses the opportunity or just decides not to. Confirmed and understood, Commandant. Southside is actually surprisingly untouched by any kind of warfare so far. It's really been heavily focused around the center. And we got here Zulu with the anti-tank incendiary munitions. Cancel the mechanized company. Does he then? No, he goes for it and then goes fire support elements at the same time. Interesting choice. I'm guessing he wants the uh, bonus effort into tank guns. That's right. That plus it makes the Haftalatnung anti-tank grenades better as well. So an interesting choice there by Zulu. An interesting choice indeed. Panzer is being pushed back by the Hamba. Got the Australian swing forwards here. And an Achtrad for Zulu. An Achtrad. Meine Kinder. Back of base here. Silgaths. Company command puts us up. Ambulance quit withdrawing here. Panzer is moving up. There's a bit of here and there. But again, most of the fighting is heavily centralized there with. Only some light skirmishing on the flanks as either players perhaps have not been quite interested. And then again, the way this map is designed, it does kind of also make it a bit hard because it is a very small map. And it's kind of one of those features. Unfortunately, when you make maps that are very small, in particular in a map like Fenwell Approach, it does create a bit of a center focus because to an extent you control the center, you can then cover a lot more of the map. In particular with the design as it is here, it does make it a bit hard for some focus on the sides. So, Dingo there being forced back. It does make it impossible, but it does make it a bit tougher compared to say, a map like, you know, Pekino or some more that are definitely a bit bigger spacious. Even something like Taranto, which does have a lot more paths around the flank of Twin Beaches, but then we'll just kind of leaves a lot there around the center. Sounds like here, Punch Pioneer is into tank sections. Big build up here by Zulu, another Goliath there. He's really attempting to make the Goliaths work, but so far, he is not having much of any success with them, except just making large, pretty explosions. South Lone Punch being squad here around it swiftly as Zulu sets in. The, of course, the Gus is in for the glory of the British Empire, not Zulu. There we go, 250 HP straight into the two pounder gun here. Could lose another one already. Pantex rushing forward here. Achtrad there going in. Goliath the northern flank here. Zulu senses the opportunity. Goes in hard for Deutschland. Achtrad here blasting through the British lines. Blocking off with draw rates here. Six, two pounder gun. Then a bit of tough spot. Vickers in worse off here. Setting up the two pounder gun. The Goliath's going to move in. No, the two pounder gun can't hit it. Oh dear. It's going to take it out. Oh, oh no. He's going to take out the Vickers as well. It's two for one. Zulu goes for it and double wipes. A silly guts. Anti-tank gun and machine gun, but the Arctrad goes down on the other hand. More crucially, it's going to be tough for Zulu to get away with it, but yeah, that was... Whew. Oh, the ambulance moving forward to British foot guards. More than happy to blow it up. He's trying to make off with the two-pounder gun here. Good shot there, though. Anti-tank grenade off. He's going to get the Humber. Absolute hand-to-hand -hand combat brutality action here between Zulu and Osela Garth, ladies and gentlemen. Whew. proof considered there by Zulu. Me and Marta Garth bring up the Matilda 2 Pack 38 has been brought forth here by Zulu and Deutschland. That Goliath, that one made all the others worth it. We got Operation Scorpion here out of Zulu. I'll have to activate Jesus a bit. 
So the fight doesn't exactly have a lot of the uh, tanks and vehicles to like really make it work well. There you go, section they met here by a lot of angry Germans there and ripping through the anti-tank section there. We could see white on the Lagarde. And of course, he could go for plan and actually salvage some of his light vehicles here. Like, you know, maybe get some more guns on his men. That could be an idea there for Zulu. Again, whether or not he goes for it is an entirely different subject matter. But it is something here Zulu could consider as a silly guff. A silly guff, meanwhile, I mean, you know, more Matildas, more foot guards, maybe some Grants here. But there you go. First, Matilda 2 infantry tank moving forwards. For those wondering, was there Matilda 1? Hence the name. And yes, there was. It was just basically like really, really slow. And it only had a machine gun. So. It obviously didn't see actual much service of the war, but it was a thing. Pack 38 lining up here. Territory sector out of contact. Dingo Ball wait still alive. Really impressive Dingo handling here by Zilligath. Really impressive. Thumbs up to that. Panzer is moving up here. Backed up the Panzer goes to the 250. The ambulance, the Pack 38 as well here. Baker sitting up here. Going to get hit with a steel hand grenade here, flung through the air. Ryan, the machine gun crew here. Foot guards moving in, clearing out the point of Germans. We've got 425 as a 294. Zulu standing forward behind us. So in terms of victory points, quite aggressively here. Foot guards there, being gripped apart. Panzer as well. Pack 38 sitting up here. Good shot in there. Snares off as well. They're damaging. We've got gammon bombs on the Pack 38 crew here. Blasting for the crew, but they do get off another shot here. Can recruit. Oh no, he's going to lose the ambulance. He loses the ambulance and the two panda gun and the foot guard combo. A brutal blow there to Zulu and Deutschland. Pack 38 though there scores an incendiary round hit on the Dingo, which could actually destroy it here. Maybe, I don't know. Can they actually destroy vehicles like that? Apparently not. Looks like it though. So he could go for plan and now salvage these two for some extra weapons for his men. We'll see. Mines down here. Northern pumps here for the section. Zulu now rushing for the victory point he can reach. More easily here beneath the otherwise watchful gaze of a Silagath. Southern points here being seized. Panzig is rolling forwards. No sign of further taking out of Zulu. Sappers are for Silagath. Mines, of course, we've got the Panzer Army Commando here for Zulu, realizing he does need some bigger guns. I could see some Flag 36s here coming out to deal with the Matilda 2. They could also go for the Panther 3, obviously. Again, we'll have to see what Zulu does. He's definitely a bit out there where most games don't go. Getting in for Northern Point. Zulu is quickly expanding German control of the map. Pack 38 has been recruited by a few plucky Panzer Grenadiere. Pull, auto pull, but can't we just have the half track to it? Nine! Such a waste of precious fuel! What? Matilda Wing Forts. Proximity alarm near our victory point! Panzer Me Commander almost done. Matilda Wing Forts here, pack 38 at the ready, and goes for it, bounces majestically, like a rock just thrown at you know, a tank. Hand of fee there, Alsring Elf Zulu and Deutschland. Still no sign of planned or any abilities. Still no attempt to maybe like to show himself some extra guns in the South Panzer versus the Foot Guards. Building the center there, of course, has collapsed under the incessant point. amount of abuse there of both armies' guns. Northern points are falling to the German army. Panzer fee halfway down, of course, we've got another Goliath here for Zulu. Panzer is brought here by the. Actual strings, yeah. Matilda. Oh, that's actually Crusader tank here at Fort Siligath. Going ahead with the 250 3. Panzer 3 ready here for Zulu and the German army. Panzer X creeping up. They keep spotting Matilda. Not doing much. Actually, hard themselves. Matilda, of course, easily and violently goes up here. Pack 30 turning on his gun and gets a good shot through here. Dinger moving up here. Panzer moving in his roll here. Quick return, fine. There you go. Matilda's officer stinging hit here, but again, the dingo survives. Again, very impressive dingo, impressive dingo preservation there, Boss Lagaf. Crusader's almost only pantry withdrawing, a bit damaged. Zulu not doing much more with his battle group as of yet. Foot guns are moving up. Flanking the panther three here. Putting a bit of pressure then Zulu, who is going for another ambulance. Thumbs up. 
Panthers there taking heavy damage from two pounder guns and the foot guards. Panthers there being further pounded by British guns. Southern pawns have been cut off and seized back here by the British Empire, further leaving Zulu a bit consternated and discombobulated. And there we go, do you like to get plunder? Thumbs up. We got Sector Subterfuge and we got Firestorm. Goliath spotted and ruined another slap across the face here for Zulu. But at least he can salvage stuff now. Guns for his men. He can get his hands on it, of course. Pack Freddy, of course, gets a hit in the action on the Matilda too. Mine's being wrecked here. Good shot there from the pack on Zulu's Matilda. Panzer Yates moving forward. Panther is supporting here. It's a straight up assault here by the 90th Panther gun. Sean. Two Panther gun shoots, but either fails to hit or fails to penetrate. There you go. Dingo finally goes down. Only took close to 20 minutes for Zulu to take out Asilagad's Dingo. Another Goliath it would appear here from. So the guy forgot Crusader flanking going for the 250 half tech. Panzer goes up. We could see. A lot of anti-tank grenades if you hadn't just spent all the missions on the Goliath. That kind of undercuts uh, Zulu's attempts there. Still could salvage the ambulance there. Of course, the question is, what is a gun doing in the ambulance? And of course, and you know, it's a war. You're gonna have guns no matter what. Pack fleet setting up here, slightly withdrawing. All victory points back control of the guard. Zulu once more is gonna have to put a bit of effort there to get them back. Launching a large effort in Norfolk. Panzer 3 spearheading effort back supported by the three Panzer Gunnier squad here, noting no upgrades yet, of course, partly because all those munitions have gone towards more explosive things than an MG 34. And we got the Siligar there with a Grant tank on the way. The M3 Grant. The good old fashioned Lend Lease there for the British. Northern points are being seized. Grant halfway done. Got the Goliath there sneaking ahead. Very slowly. Quietly. Like a predator in the grass. Except most predators don't explode. Another panzer for you there for Zulu and for Deutschland. Gentlemen, welcome to the front. Bring forces southwards here. Looks like Sulu is willing to open up a new frontier versus Zulagafta and it makes sense they're trying to tag into like you know where he's really heavily focused trying to maybe sort of swing through the south he could work better plus if he thinks the flank is exposed it could allow Zulagafta to bait him into the Goliaths ah. going for the crusader with the current blood ah oh, no gets past it ambulance down again Zulagafta apparently working on getting that American uh, citizenship here Panzer 3 going for the Crusader tank, anti tank rifle fire, anti tank and fire there, ripping into the Crusader tank. The Kutsi go down, but still, so the guards will definitely, like, you know, inflict some heavy blows. There's Zulu, foot guards moving forward, got Panzer going for the second Panzer 3 arriving here, 250 SV taking heavy fire. Grant and Matilda moving forward, and the 250 3 is a down, a huge blow here to Zulu. Panzer is doing can pack 38, Panzer 3 fire here. Panzer is being picked off by British. Gunnery, but there you go. We could see the Grant go down. Can us Zulu take it out? Yes. We got the Matilda being flanked here. Panther goes in. We got a two pounder gun here. Possibly coming the flank here. Panther Thief taking heavy damage. Matilda, though, taking immense damage here from the Panther Thief. Zulu's flank is working up beautifully. And with this, Zulu now has total armor supremacy against the Siligarth there. We lost every one of his tanks here. And Zulu didn't lose one of his Panther Thieves, so though. He did lose. Well, the Goliath and the trucks, but that's actually a lot of stuff you can now plunder. Well, of course, I've seen Zulu does plunder it. What do you need? If Zulu adheres to Navy regulations. It's up. So you can only plunder once the captain's done the plunder, and obviously his captain isn't allowed. Uh, Ready, willing and able. New warrior. Let's see what you're made of. And the Intendium appearance and rounds are definitely pretty good. Any attempt to salvage here, Bazulu? I mean, you could get some pretty nice guns out of that. Yes, there we go, there we go. We very often, yes, German troops didn't know how to salvage American tanks, and partly were pretty quick to figure out where they stored all the goodies, like, you know, the food and cigarettes and whatnot. Little fun fact in this. So there you go. Got BARs up there. Of course, the British force like, Oi! 
They have boss? Yeah, didn't you know? No! Why can't we have those? Bloody tankers, won't you? Bloody tankers. Panzerfeeming up, Panzerfeeming there could of course also salvage them for bazookas, but obviously give it more risk than the Panzerfeeming for that. Still, that does give Zulus Wars a bit of a boost here. Panzerfeeming moves in here, attack from south side, see? Six Panagon here for Siligath, of course, now having to respond to all of his armor burning and being salvaged by, you know, sweaty German troops covered in soot and these loyal. In the south, Panzerfeeming being swamped with the double sample sections, could get a wipe here on Zulus, Panzerfeeming, but no. Friedrich there gets up, Panzerfeeming dashing in, going for the two pounder gun here, swarming his remaining anti tank gun. Of course, he does have the foot guards. Oh, Panda 3 down. We might see Zulu's second Panda 3 go down as well. That would be quite painful here for Zulu for sure. I'm saying he completely undercut whatever advantage he just gave. Oh, and a mine. Mine got. His Panda 3s are gone. Big move there for Zinagath without even having to move for it. And that suddenly means like. Zulu's entire advantage has just vanished up in smoke. Sanya Siligath is back to being in a relatively good position. Although, of course, he still has to reckon with the bar and the Panzer gonna Of course, he could get himself some more guns, but. Well, obviously, I'll wait. Panzer is moving in here, troop reinforcing. Though, of course, no healing because he's lost all his ambulances so far. Siligath so bringing in the Matilda 2 here. Fresh row troops here. Sap is advancing. Yeah, Panzer is doing what they can. But yeah, getting suppressed with machine gun does put a bit of a death into that. Panzer is in. Panzer gun is. I think that's a mistake there. Bazula perhaps overlooked. Or perhaps he's intentionally in his low health two man squad. Panzer gun is. I don't think that's particularly good though. And I hope Zula agrees with me. But there you go. Quick grenade. Then retreating at least. Pushing off the machine. Almost had it to that. Oh, he does wipe it. We might like to be able to make off with it, which certainly would be painful and a bit awkward there for us at the gaff. Make off with it, make off with it. See, ah, oh, Vickers gets wiped there by the foot guards, ace level. Further south here, Panzer is Panzer Pioneer moving in, and we got another ambulance there for Zulu. Uh, ambulance. Foot guards, Matilda's moving in there. And straight up setting up shop here, right outside Zulu's base. That's something gonna make things tough here for Zulu. There you go. Third ambulance out for Zulu. Third ambulance. 365-75. Quite a leader. We do get some mines out of Zulu finally. Thumbs up to that. Northern point being seized here by Asilagaf. <clears throat> Section seeing southwards. Got another wave of troops here out of Zulu. This time probably healed. The has been kept close here. Further south section was the Panzer Puny and the Panzer Eagers. Need to be careful not to drive the ambulance first. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Zulu is uh, narrowly avoid losing another ambulance here to Asilagaf. German assault happening around the center. Panzer Eagles, Panzer Gun is running in. 346 versus 75. <clears throat> Foot guards raising in, but again, focus down by the Panzer Gun is two squads of which have a BAR there. Plus a fair bit of veterans. He's this collecting in a poorly packed for each shoots, misses the Matilda 2 or bounces. It's hard to tell there. Panzer taking heavy losses. Could get wiped here. Australians adventurously striking in Matilda there, just slightly withdrawing here and letting off an awful lot of steam. Now the Grant Air Force of the Gap and the British Empire. The enemy has taken a victory point. Vickers setting up here. Pack 38 bounces. Panzig is nearly avoid getting utterly turned into paste there. Well, Otto does. The rest obviously still got turned into paste. Fixing up the ambulance and maybe handing the crew a bit of an apology. Bottle of schnapps. Accidentally send them in right into like you know every enemy gun, like the other two ambulances. They're gonna have to wait for their schnapps posthumously. Them. 
Matilda taking a few hits here. And up north, Panzer sitting a mine there. Yes, Osiligata has been sneaking up mines wherever he goes. Thumbs up there. Center falling here to the German army again. And again, Zulu there on point with his ambulance. It's only been anomaly because he's from America. We obviously know how they have ambulances. Maybe it's the Navy training. Who knows? All the way. The section pushes back the Panzer. The mine goes off and wipes the Panzer. Gives a stinging load to Zulu. Bring in another Pack 38 here. Grant dashing through here, causing chaos and consternation for Zulu once more. See, awaits the arrival of the Pack 38, number two. Punch was there being suppressed, foot guards moving forwards. We got archers here for Zuligath, though. Speaking as to what Zulu currently has, Pack. An Archie Tank Destroyer would definitely be in the complete overkill end of things. I mean, the heaviest Zulu currently has is a 250 half track, and he just lost his third ambulance. It's not like there's going to be a lot of targets for the Archie to like meaningfully shoot at. Uh, he's trying to destroy the Rex. There's a Zulu can't salvage him, perhaps not. Yeah, definitely not looking good here for Zulu. Not looking good. North here we got the Panzer's the Australian C ace level with a bit bar versus ace level with a scope Lee Enfield. And losing all these ambulances really have hurt Zulu in a lot of ways. Now we got 220 or oh, 277 versus 75 here. Zulu is increasingly being pushed inside his base here by Zulagath and his constant assaults. And that moment where he lost his two Panthers easier really hurt Zulu. That was like, you know, just such a big, painful moment for Zulu. And it really just made it hard here for Zulu at this point to like just regain any kind of control because he really lacks the Panther Thieves to like be more aggressive, swift, mobile, and just like, you know, both pressure armor and infantry. And crucially, in a manner where he doesn't have to like constantly enforce stuff. Now the Grand here for Zuligav. 250 have to run straight to the grant that is on the field already. But yeah, more grants, of course, will be a problem here for Zulu. Salvaging the ambulance there for a bit of the guns. Now it's up there to Zulu. Salvaging the other one for some guns as well there. 3 out of 30. So there we go. A bit more heavily equipped Panzer Grenadiers of Azula now. Thumbs up. Trading for Grant here, of course, with them apart. Now the Grant almost done there for Siligav. Pack 38s both shot. Bounce of Matilda's armor there harmlessly. Foot guards flank in with support from the machine and The Panzer Squad here will have to withdraw the standard. No chance. Pack 38s lining up again. Matilda's putting on the pressure. Second Grant moving to the front line now. South side here, we got the Goliath out. Here's another 250 3 is here. Going for the second quick, get a wipe and almost got it. Zulu sends in the men. He's looking to get the wipe and he does get the wipe. Then a Siligath section. Of course, he still has much bigger fish to fry. In this case, much bigger fish to blow up. As we got the Grants and the Matils there going in hard. We got snares being chucked. Pack 38 to firing away there. Grant taking a lot of damage. Engine blown here on the Matils. We got the foot guards popping grenades in one pack gun while gunning down the other one. It means both pack guns are cleared out at more or less the same time here. And this very much appears to be it, I think, for Zulu at this point. All of his forces have been decimated. All of his options dealing for Siligath tanks are gone. And that is it. GG. Game over. A pretty impressive match here in a lot of ways. Zulu made great use of the penalties. Could do better with the Goliaths. Obviously, there'll work to be done there. But I think it also just highlights a bit like the difference between the two battle groups. Whereas, you know, the Australian battle group, I think, just has much more concise, clear game plan, but also one that can work in different ways, both offensively and defensively. The Espionage battle group is sort of a bit all over the place with no real clear plan, and it doesn't really, like, formulate into anything, you know, concrete, except, like, you know, I guess Goliath. So it's really why you're not seeing it that much. It's, like, it's neat, but it's just... It's not that great. Still, Zulu was close to winning with it. Again, I think, in my opinion, the moment was just basically when he lost those two Panzer threes. Because had he just been able to keep them alive, maybe pull up some more, or go for some Flak 36 and I, I think Zulu had like a real chance of winning this. But that assault there with the Panzer threes absolutely cost him. So, 
There you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. You learned something from it. If you did, subscribe, like, share, comment, tell your friends, tell your family. As always, you can support the podcast by donating up PayPal or Patreon. Patreon. This is Imperial Links. Cheers and see you all tomorrow for another episode. Bye, everyone.